today's notes class was about the American Revolution, how the United States goes from 13 colonies to one nation. There's a lot that can be said about the American Revolution. You'll learn more about it in eighth grade and in high school. This is a world history class, so we're going to finish the American Revolution basically in a day. In America, somehow things almost always seem to break down into three main groups. For example, today we have the Democrats who would support President Obama. We have the Republicans who would support the challenger, Mitt Romney. We also have a middle group, though, called Independents, or the Undecided, who really don't know yet who they want to vote for. They change from election to election, and they're really the people that decide our presidential elections. Every commercial you see for the next month will be uh, based around this concept of which guy to vote for um, and trying to win the Independents uh, line of thought. During the time period we're talking about, there were also three groups of Americans. There were the Patriots. They were the guys that wanted American independence. They were willing to fight for freedom from England. They were tired of having to listen to the English, and they were tired of having to pay English taxes, and they were wanting freedom. The second group were the Loyalists. The Loyalists quite literally wanted to remain loyal to England. They wanted to stay part of England. They were willing to fight to remain tied to England. There were some reasons why. England was the richest country in the world at the time. By being a part of the English Empire, they, you know, the Americans had a lot more money than a lot of other countries would. Also, England had the biggest army in the world, and the Americans were oftentimes worried that the Indians would come. The American army couldn't fight them off, but the English army could. But then there was also a middle group then. These guys had no real opinion on independence. They didn't care if we remained part of England or if we became an independent country. They really said, you know what, y'all fight it out and decide it for us. Over time, though, this group shrank, just like in an election year, the independents shrank also. Sooner or later, they had to side with one group or the other. The majority eventually joined the Patriots. The first big fight in the American Revolution um, happens at places called Lexington and Concord. These are considered the shots heard around the world, um, as the American Revolution is going to set off a, a network of similar revolutions around different places. Actually, these two fights precede the signing of the Declaration of Independence. The English soldiers were coming over to tell the Americans, hey, calm down, relax, stop all this stuff. The Americans were wanting to stand up for their rights, and, and it led to a fight, and they fight at Lexington and Concord. Please note that although, yes, we have a Lexington, South Carolina, and yes, there's a Concord, North Carolina, these aren't those. These are in Massachusetts. Um, this is the time period that Paul Revere does his famous ride, his famous midnight ride, uh, and screams out, the British are coming, the British are coming, the British are coming, but you need to realize he really doesn't do that. He starts to. Um, he gets the trip started, but he gets caught right away. The English arrest him. They lock him up. And a friend of his actually does the famous ride. Unfortunately for his friend, about a hundred years later, a guy sits down to write a poem about it. He knows about Paul Revere. He doesn't know about the other guy. And so Paul Revere becomes famous for doing this, even though he spent the night in jail. Well, the beginning of the war did not go well for America. England had the biggest army in the world, had the biggest navy in the world. Uh, an army's guys that fight on land, a navy's guys that fight in the water, on boats. England had the best soldiers. America, by comparison, was a country of farmers. And farmers with pitchforks don't do well usually against soldiers with guns and cannons. And so America lost a lot of early important big battles, like the Battle of Brooklyn Heights. Um, Americans were frequently captured while fighting. According to the rules of war, you're not allowed to capture pris or kill prisoners, so when the Americans were captured, they were actually put in prisons, like this boat. Many Americans died while in prison camps. They're supposed to be fed, they're supposed to be taken care of medically. But you also need to realize that the food the English had and the medicine the English had, they sent to their soldiers, which makes sense, and we've had the same problem in America. We've sometimes let prisoners of war die. Um, so many Americans died sitting in these prison boats.
the turning point of the war, or the moment when England finally begins losing and America finally begins winning, happens at a place called Saratoga. The Battle of Saratoga was a month-long fight between the English and the Americans. A lot of times students get the term battle and war confused. A battle is a large fight in a war, but a war is the overarching thing. A side can win many battles and still lose a war, and a side can lose many battles and still win the war. Another problem students have is they sometimes think battles only fight for a day. Uh, but sometimes battles take long periods of time. For example, Saratoga lasts a month. You wake up in the morning, you have a little breakfast, you start fighting. You fight all day, it gets dark, people stopped fighting. They gathered up the dead, they gathered up the wounded, they had dinner, they went to bed, and they knew the next day it was all going to start all over again. Typically during this time period, people did not fight on Sundays. Uh, they had church, they had a religious service. Sometimes both sides kind of shared the same religious beliefs, and they might even meet while doing their religious time, um, with the realization that the next day they're back at shooting at each other. The Battle of Saratoga was a month-long fight. If fights were quick, the English had a, a big advantage, because they had the best soldiers. If a battle takes a long period of time, though, like Saratoga, the Americans have a distinct advantage. The British... When they lose soldiers, they don't have reinforcements just sitting there. The Americans can go back home and say, hey, we need more people to come fight. The British have got to send letters across the ocean. The British then get the letters. They have to get guys sent back across the ocean. It takes a while. If supplies begin running out for the Americans, they go home. Their wives give them food. The English have to send for supplies or try to go steal supplies. America ends up winning the Battle of Saratoga. It's considered the turning point of the war when America finally begins winning. France had promised the Americans that if they could win a big battle, they would come in and help. And the Battle of Saratoga is that moment when France finally says, we're joining up with the Americans. I had some students last week ask, but Mr. Simpson, I heard the French helped us during the Revolution. Why did they help us when we beat the French in the French and Indian War? The French wanted revenge on England for the war not necessarily America. So they help out America so they can beat England, which is a much bigger problem to them than we were. Many people from other countries decided they would help the Americans fight the English, not just the French. Spain had also lost a lot of territories to the English, and Spain also wanted revenge on the English for their losses. Germany wasn't a single country at this time, but there were lots of big German states. Each of those states wanted a chance to kind of flex their muscles and show the world that they had power. And so Germany also agreed to help the United States after the Battle of Saratoga. Other European countries wanted the chance to beat England, which at this time was the most powerful country in the world. The most famous guy that came over to help the United States, though, was the Marquis de Lafayette. The Marquis de Lafayette was a Frenchman who came over and helped the United States after Saratoga, and he was one of the guys who helped transform America from a country of farming guys trying to play soldier to actual soldiers fighting the English. The Marquis de Lafayette is a major, major ally, major, major asset for the Americans during this time. Although the most important battles of the war seem to have been fought in the north and in the middle parts of the United States, the southern United States had a lot of battles also, and in fact, more battles occur in the state of South Carolina than any of the other colonies. There are some famous South Carolina battles, Cowpens and Kings Mountain are the most famous. Kings Mountain has been argued to be the turning point of the war also, um, and I could certainly see where they were coming from on that consideration. In South Carolina, there was a large number of loyalists and a large number of patriots, and the two groups fought constantly, which leads to being so many battles. Y'all need to know Francis Marion, who is one of two famous South Carolinians who fight in the war. He led his army in guerrilla-style fighting, kind of like the Indians did, hiding behind trees, hiding behind rocks, jumping out and attacking the English really quickly while the English are marching from place to place, and then before the English could turn around and get ready to shoot back, 
the Americans would run off and hide and go somewhere else. Uh, because of this, Francis Marion earns the nickname the Swamp Fox, and he becomes a famous South Carolina hero. The movie The Patriot is based in large part on Francis Marion's life, although they changed the names. We're going to talk about several wars this year. One thing you need to understand that is in most wars, the different sides each have reasons why they could win, advantages uh, for their fighting. In the American Revolution, America um, had several big advantages. Yes, we were a country of farmers and hunters, but hunters know how to shoot guns at least, and that's a definite advantage. These guys weren't, you know, guys that never held guns in their lives, like myself, pretty much. Um, the Americans also had a lot of countries that were willing to help them fight. The English, the Spanish, the French, all those guys were willing to help us out, and that's a big advantage. The Americans also knew the land better than the British because they were fighting in America. The fighting wasn't happening in England. So these guys, you know, they lived here. They knew what was going on. They knew what kind of land to expect. They knew where the different roads went. The English had no idea. And finally, a lot of the Americans, like George Washington, had learned how to fight during the French and Indian War. George Washington watched how the French fought and the Indians fought. The guerrilla-style raids, the, the surprise attacks. And he watched how the English fought the orderly, the nice, straight lines, getting shot and standing there. And they knew how to fight the British because of this. The British did have some big advantages also, though. For example, the British had, once again, the best army in the world, the best trained soldiers in the world, the best supplies in the world. And they were willing to hire in mercenaries. They were willing to hire other countries to send soldiers to help them. A lot of people were willing to join America's side just for the chance to beat the English. The English weren't going to take that without responding, and so they went and they hired people to help them fight the Americans. The most famous allies the English had were the Germans during this time period. Finally, the Battle of Yorktown ends the war. The war lasted for about seven years, and it went back and forth with the Americans winning some battles, the British winning some battles. But the final battle is the Battle of Yorktown. The English were completely surrounded by the Americans. They were cut off from getting to the ocean because the French Navy had come in to help. And the leader of the British, a guy named Lord Cornwallis, was finally surrounded and realized it was over. And at that point, he surrendered the British army to the Americans. They were allowed to go home, the war was over, and England had to recognize America as a free country. America realized they owed French aid a lot of thanks, and after this, the Americans and the French governments were pretty close until something later is going to happen to bring it all to an end. <laughs>